story that I've got for you today is a special story. They're all special. But this one is particularly for Amelia today because I was talking to Amelia in school and I was telling her about this story and I told her that I would record it for tonight because I've got a special helper to help me with this story. And the special helper is sitting just beside me. It's a secret. I'm not going to tell you who it is yet until the right time. It's a naughty little sister story and it's called The Icy Cold Something. I can't tell you what the something is yet because it will spoil the surprise. So The Icy Cold Something. Long ago, when I was a little girl and I had a little sister, we lived next door to a kind lady called, can you remember her name? Mrs Jones. And my sister used to call this lady Mrs. Coco sometimes. If my mother had to go out and couldn't take my little sister, this kind next door lady used to mind her. My sister was always glad to be minded by Mrs. Coco. And Mrs. Coco was always glad to mind my little sister. They enjoyed minding days very much. Well now, one cold blowy day when the wind was pulling all the old leaves off the trees to make room for the new baby ones to grow, our mother asked Mrs Coco Jones to mind my sister while she went shopping. Mrs Coco and my sister had a lovely time. They swept up all the leaves from Mr Jones's nice tidy paths and put them into a heap for him to burn. They went indoors and laid Mr Jones's tea and they were just going to sit down by the fire to have a rest when they heard Mr. Coco coming down the back path. Mr. Coco came down the path pushing his bicycle with one hand and holding a very strange looking wooden box with holes in it in the other hand. When Mr. Jones saw my little sister peeping at him out of his kitchen window, he smiled and smiled. Hello, Mrs. Pickle, he said. What are you doing here then? I'm being minded, said my little sister. And then, because she was an inquisitive child, she said, What have you got in that box, Mr Coco? Just wait a minute and I'll show you, Mr Coco said. And he went to put his bicycle in the shed. I wonder what's in that box, Mrs Coco, said my inquisitive little sister. It's a very funny box. It's got holes in it. There's a picture of the box. I wonder, can you guess what might be inside that box with the holes in it? Ah, said Mrs. Coco, just you wait and see. One kind Mr. Coco came in and saw my impatient little sister. He was so good that he didn't even stop to take off his coat. He opened the box at once. And my sister saw an icy, cold, what do you think it is? Tortoise, fast asleep, lying on top of a lot of hay. What do you think? This is our tortoise, Flash. So he's going to help us with the story. So we'll put him up here. He might climb a little bit as well. Have you ever seen a tortoise? Well, you have now, haven't you? But my little sister had never seen a tortoise. And tortoises are very strange animals. They have hard round shells. There's his hard round shell. And they have long crinkly necks. Does he poke, poke his head out? Mm. And beaky little noses. If I turn him around this way, you might see his beaky little nose. There. You see it? They have tiny black eyes and four scratchy looking claws. When they're asleep, you can't see their heads or their claws. They're tucked away under their shell and they just look like cold round stones. Let me see if I can make him put his head in. Look. Look. And he'll come out again. Make him hide. 
My little sister thought the tortoise was a stone at first. She touched it and it was icy cold. What is it? She said, what is this stone thing? Mr. Coco picked the tortoise up and showed her where the little claws were tucked away and the beaky little shut-eyed face under the shell. It's a tortoise, Mr. Coco said. He's having his winter sleep now, said Mrs. Coco. Our tortoise isn't having his winter sleep, that's why he's moving about. Mr. Jones told my sister that one of the men who worked with him had given him the tortoise because he was going away and wouldn't have anywhere to keep it in his new home. I shall put him away in the cupboard under the stairs now, he said. He will sleep there all winter and wake up again when the warm days come. Now that's not where our tortoise has his winter sleep, but I'll tell you about that afterwards. Where will he climb up my, my shoulder? Just as Mr. Coco said this, the tortoise opened his little beady black eyes and looked at my sister. Then it closed them and went to sleep again. So Mr. Coco put it in his box right at the back of the cupboard under the stairs. That's a funny animal, said my little sister. After that, she talked and talked about the tortoise. She kept saying, when will it wake up? When will it wake up? But it didn't. So she got tired of asking. And by the time Christmas came, she had almost forgotten about it. And when the snow fell, she had quite forgotten. And when spring came and the birds began to sing again, she went in one day to have her morning cocoa with her next door friend, Mrs. Jones. And Mrs. Jones had forgotten too. There you go and flash. They were just drinking their cocoa and Mrs. Jones was telling my naughty little sister about some of the things that she had done when she was a little girl when they heard thump, thump, bang, bang. Oh dear, said Mrs. Coco, there's someone at the front door. And she went to look. But there wasn't. Thump, thump. It must be the back door, said Mrs. Coco Jones, and she went to look. But it wasn't. Bang, bang. What can it be? asked Mrs. Jones. Now, my clever little sister had been listening hard. It's in the understairs place, Mrs. Coco, she said. Listen. Thump, thump. Bang, bang. Oh, goodness, said Mrs. Coco. But she was a brave lady. She opened the door of the cupboard and looked. And my little sister looked too. And Mrs. Coco stared. And my little sister stared. There was the tortoise's wooden box shaking and bumping because the cross tortoise inside had woken up and was banging to be let out. Goodness me, said Mrs. Coco, that tortoise has woken up. Goodness me, said my funny sister, that tortoise has woken up. And Mrs. Coco looked hard at my little sister and my little sister looked hard at her. I shall have to see it, Mrs. Coco said, and she picked up the bumping box and carried it into her kitchen to put the box on the table. Then she lifted my sister up onto the chair so that she could watch. Mrs. Coco lifted the lid off the box and there was that wide awake tortoise. His head was waggle waggling and his claws were scratch scratching to get out. I used to have a tortoise when I was a girl, Mrs. Coco said, so I know just what to do. And do you know what she did? She put some warm water into a bowl and she put the tortoise into the warm water and then she took it out and dried it very, very carefully on an old towel. Then Mrs. Coco put the clean, fresh tortoise onto the table and said, just you mind it while I go and get it something to eat, there's a good child. My sister did keep her hand on the tortoise's back and she was quite still until Mrs. Coco came back with the cabbage leaf. Look, my naughty little sister said, look at its waggling head, Mrs. Jones. And she put her face right down so that she could see her black eyes. Hello, Mr. Tortoise, she said. 
and the tortoise made a funny noise at her. It said, yes, just like that. My poor sister was surprised. She didn't like that noise very much, but Mrs. Coco said that the tortoise only said, yes, because it was hungry and not because it was cross. Mrs. Coco said tortoises are nice, friendly things, so long as you get them go, you let them go their own way. And because my little sister had minded the tortoise for her, she let him have the first cabbage leaf. At first, he only looked at it and pushed it about with his beaky head, but at last he bit a big bit out of it. There, Mrs. Jones said, that's the first thing he's tasted since last summer. See that. Mr. Coco made the tortoise a little home in his rockery where it could go to sleep and it could walk around among the stones or hide among the rockery flowers if it wanted to. Sometimes it used to eat the flowers and make Mr. Coco cross. That tortoise lived with the Coco Joneses for many, many years. It slept under the stairs in winter and walked about the rockery in summer. It was there when my sister was a grown up lady. Mr. and Mrs. Coco called it Henry, but of course, when my sister was little, she always called it Henry Coco Jones. So that was the story of the icy cold tortoise. So that tortoise was called Henry. Our little tortoise is called Flash. So what do you think of Flash? Now he doesn't sleep under the, under the stairs or in the shed. When he's having his winter sleep, he goes into a special box and we put him somewhere that is very cold. Where do you think that is? I think if you've been in my class, you might know where it is because I've told you. He sleeps in the fridge. Isn't that a funny place for a tortoise to sleep? So he sleeps in the fridge because that just keeps him at the right temperature to keep him asleep. And then he doesn't wake up until it's summertime. If I put him on a cushion, I might see if we can walk about a little bit for you. And he eats weeds. His favourites are dandelions. That's what he likes to eat the best. But he eats other things too. Oh, oh, he's coming to see you. You can give Flash a wave. Flash is a reptile. That's a special kind of animal. So maybe you could have a look in a bit or um, ask mommy or daddy to help you look online and find out some information about tortoises and reptiles. Because if you're in my class, I was gonna bring Flash in to meet you this year and I'll not be able to do that. So here's Flash to see you. You wanna say goodbye to everybody, Flash? Say bye. <laughs> see you next time. <laughs>